Okay, so let's try and see if we can do some maths with this. Faraday's law tells us that for a current carrying wire, F is BIL. We're going to assume for all of these that uh, it's always at right angles, so you can remember it is actually BIL sine theta, but we'll assume for now that everything is always at right angles to the magnetic field. Now we also know a general equation, work done is force times distance. Remember that equation only works if force is constant, but we're going to be assuming for the sake of this that uh, magnetic field, current and length are all constant. Um, so therefore we can say that, that yes, uh, this equation works. Now, let's imagine that we're moving a conducting wire through a magnetic field. So here's my magnetic field and I'm moving it through like this. My animation's not working, um, but so just imagine that it slices through um, and moves through like that. Now, we know that work done is force times distance. So if this distance is S, I know that the force is BIL. So work done is BIL S. But if you think about that, what I've got is now a rectangle with length L side S. So I can say L times S is the area of magnetic field that it passes through. So I get a new equation. I can say that the work done is magnetic flux, sorry, magnetic field strength times the current in my wire multiplied by the area that it moves through. Now, if you think back to, again, to IGCSE, actually, um, we know that induced, or we know that uh, voltage is work done per unit charge. So an EMF, remember an EMF is uh, uh, energy supplied uh, per coulomb. So that's gonna be work done on the charge divided by the total amount of charge. So if I substitute that back into our previous equation, we can say that the EMF will be BIA over Q, because I already worked out what uh, the work done was. I also know that the equation for charge is Q is I times T. So what I can say is if I substitute in for Q, I get BIA over I delta T. And then I can cancel out the I's and get this equation, BA over delta T. A couple of quick definitions for you, just to make sure you're clear with this. Um, the first one is the idea of magnetic flux density. So magnetic flux density, that is a property of a magnet. It tells us how powerful it is. So it's, you can think of it as the number of field lines uh, per square meter. So this is measured in Tesla, which has a symbol capital T. Magnetic flux that is how much magnetism is passing through an object, through an area. Um, so here I've got two magnets with identi identical flux densities, but because one has a larger area, the one with the larger area has a larger flux because it's got more field lines passing through it. Um, now, defi by definition, um, we can say that magnetic flux is given by the symbol uh, phi. This is a, a Greek letter phi. Um, and you write it as an I, capital I with a circle through the middle of it. Um, so that is B times A. And we give it the unit of the Weber. It's spelt Weber, but we pronounce it Weber, um, which is a capital W and a little b. Um, so we can say that one Weber is one Tesla meter squared. Not Tesla per meter squared, remember, it's just Tesla meter squared because I'm doing something in Tesla multiplied by something in meter squared. Um, and we always measure it perpendicular to the area. There's another one that we need um, because we might have more than one coil going through here. If you imagine that, if I've got a coil coming in, well, that's going to give me one set of area. And then if my coil goes round again, or again and again, every time I create a new coil, I'm adding an extra slice of area to that. So I can just multiply by the number of coils. So my last definition is magnetic flux linkage that is n times phi, or nba. So 
when a mass magnetic flux linkage, uh, magnetic flux linkage doesn't have a symbol by itself, um, so we just give it the, we always write it as n phi, because it means n lots of that magnetic flux. Now, as I said before, we're going to assume for most purposes that uh, this is always perpendicular to the coil. But if it's ever not perpendicular, um, you can just look at it like this and you can see straight away. Well, uh, just resolve your forces. This is theta, so I can say uh, flux linkage, magnetic flux linkage is NBA times the cosine of the angle uh, between the, the center of the, uh, the coil and the uh, field lines. hope that makes sense to you. Okay, so let's try and put together two different things. So we've already worked out that uh, EMF must be NBA cos theta. Um, now, since we know that the flux linkage will be BA cos theta, that's what we found earlier, um, what I can say is that the induced EMF is equal to N d phi by dt. So we would write that as Faraday's law. And when we're writing Faraday's law, we can say an induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. And that encapsulates most of what we already know about uh, magnetism. We know that if I spin a coil faster, it will generate a bigger EMF. We know that if I have a stronger magnetic field, I'll have a bigger EMF. The new thing we've also learned is if I just have a physically bigger coil, I will also get a bigger EMF. Um, and again, that should hopefully make something that's approaching sense to you guys, um, because if you think about just physically a bigger coil of wire, a bigger generator, it should make um, a bigger, uh, bigger EMF out of it. All right, so let's put these two equations together. Um, we usually write the law of magnetic induction as something like this. So Lenz's law, that gives us a minus sign in here. So that's indicating that the induced EMF opposes the change that caused it. So we stick a minus sign in there to show that the induced EMF will oppose things. Faraday's law tells us that uh, EMF is proportional to rate of change of flux linkage. Now you might be asked in the exam to explain those two areas, so make sure that you're feeling confident that you could say why this occurs. So now we're going to think about how we can apply what we know to AC generators. Um, so what you need to know for your exam is to be able to show the waveform for an AC generator. We might look at a few uh, common ideas as well. So what I want you to think about is a common generator like this. So we know that in a generator we have some magnetic field lines uh, and we've got a load of coils and we rotate those coils. So as we were rotating them, I've got a diagram here that is showing the magnetic flux through the coil over time. And hopefully what you can see is when the coil is side on to the magnetic field, there will be no field lines going through it. So effectively my area is zero. If we remember the full form of the equation, I can say induced EMF is equal to minus NBA uh, sine. Is it sine or cos? NBA cos sorry, cos theta over delta time. So when, uh, or let's just, uh, we, don't, we don't want EMF yet, do we? So let's just say uh, flux linkage. Flux linkage is NBA. Um, so at the start, the actual cross-sectional area that's going through these field, that these field lines are going through is zero. So when flux is zero. Then you can see as it goes side on, magnetic flux becomes maximum until it goes lower again. And if I then rotate it a little bit more, um, what we'll see is that will go negative. So I'm going to get a sinusoidal curve. Why does it go negative? Well, if you imagine that I flipped it upside down, when I flip it upside down, that's going to uh, that's going to uh, swap swap it over. 
So this gives us a really nice simple AC generator. Uh, the simplest AC generator we get is just a coil of wire between two magnets. And what we can see with that is we can say that the flux linkage is BAN cos theta. That's what we kind of did last lesson. Uh, now, if you think about your circular, your, sorry, your uh, circular motion stuff, you could also then say that n phi is b a n cos two pi f t. But don't worry too much about that because this is more used on other examples. It doesn't come up so often uh, for C I E. What is useful though is to think about this. So. I'm going to just extend this graph a little bit. So here we have, um, at this point here, here and here. So this kind of graph is something that does come up in the exam quite a lot. So what I want to do is think about magnetic flux linkage through my coil at each point. So at this point here, I can say that there is zero magnetic flux linkage through this coil. When my field is now completely perpendicular to it, that's going to give me a big uh, uh, field through it, and it goes back to zero again, and then becomes large again. So what we can see is we get something that varies sinusoidally like this. If you remember that EMF is minus NBA uh, over delta T, so it's the rate of change of flux linkage. So if you think about the tangents to these at any one time, this explains why. Right at this point I've just drawn a tangent to, the uh, gradient is zero, and that matches up with a zero on there. As we go over here, the gradient becomes larger. I've actually drawn this upside down. Sorry about that. I'll, uh, I should have drawn this other way around. Um, so you get a larger gradient, though. Just be aware of that, because that's something that does come up in the exam.